Um, so Julian Assange has had his last ditch appeal heard uh, this week, two days in the High Court. This could determine whether he's extradited to the US or not. If he is extradited, he faces potentially 175 years in prison. Um, and essentially, this is under the Espionage Act, but really it's for publishing materials that um, governments don't want to be out there. But what have you made of, of, of this case? I mean, it does seem like it hasn't got the attention that maybe it should deserve, given the scale, given the stakes here. Yeah, and, and what I find really dispiriting is the fact that British journalists who should be all over this because, I mean, this, this should be their bread and butter, mm, the yeah. people who should be defending the right of, you know, journalists, if you want to describe Assange as a journalist, to, to uh, you know, be able to, to publish material that comes their way and to, to root around uh, in places where people don't want them to root around. Um, you would think that they would be coming to his aid and shouting about this from the rooftops, but I've, you know, I've been depressed really at the, the, the lack of coverage that there's been. It seems to me quite obvious that it is a, if it goes ahead, it will be a political extradition. Um, I think that's quite obvious. And, you know, what what was his crime? Well, he published lots of materials that the US clearly didn't want to be placed in the public domain. They've argued that he imperiled people's lives. I'm not convinced there's any real hard evidence that, uh, that he did that. What he did do was to expose um, things like extraordinary rendition and torture and what was going on at Guantanamo Bay. Uh, and he may have done that in quite a crude way, um, but you know I think he was he was entitled to do that. Um, and my fear is that it's going to have you know potentially a, a chilling effect mm. if if it goes ahead. You know those journalists who perhaps may have the bravery and the gumption to to do something like this in the future will will just steer clear of it. And I just think the whole. Uh, US-UK treaty uh, on extradition is very lopsided, actually. If you look at the figures, um, we've sent them lots more people than mm. they've ever sent us. Um, and I think actually quite sinister that someone can be, someone may have committed what the US considers to be an offence in the UK and may be living in the UK at the time, but America can say, we want that person yeah. and you've got, to, you've got to send him to us. Um, so... You know, I, I, I think it does not fit with our tradition as a country that we like to claim as our tradition in terms of free speech and freedom of mm -hmm. expression and the ability to be able to challenge the establishment and so on. Um, and if it goes ahead, I think it would be a very, very sad day for, for British freedom and for British journalism. And I hope he wins the case. Yeah. Tom? No, I think it comes down to that most fundamental argument, doesn't it? Which is that you don't have to agree with his methods. You don't have to like what his political views were to recognise that this is a clear-cut case of press freedom being under threat. And you don't just have to take our word for it. I mean, this is something that's been clear for so long. This is why the Obama administration, Department of Justice, chose not to pursue him under the Espionage Act when they had the chance in 2013 because of the fact that they realised that if they were to do this, if they were to make just publishing formally classified information was in effect an act of treason or espionage, mm. then they would also have to go after the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Guardian. Um, it would just open Pandora's box in relation to cra cracking down on the press. And I'm really interested in Paul's point about the, f the silence of the kind of journalistic establishment and, yeah. and the reasons for that, um, because of the fact that it's, it's, it's depressingly straightforward to work out why. I mean, first of all, is the fact that he's become a slightly more partisan figure. I mean, he's, he's kind of waxed and waned. He's more or less stayed the same, but in terms mm. of who his cheerleaders might happen to be has shifted over the years. He was very much someone who was seen as a kind of, was fated by the sort of liberal left for a long time. Obviously, many of his investigations were in partnership with Alan Rushbridge's Guardian. Um, but at the same time, as we move towards the Trump era and because of things like the WikiLeaks exposés of John Podesta's emails, um, which was very seen as very damaging to the Democrats in America, suddenly became this kind of pariah, quasi-Trumpist, mm. Putin apologist figure and everyone turned against him. There's also something which is um, the liberal establishment has become particularly besotted with the security services in recent years, yeah. <laughs> more so in America, arguably, because they were seen as the kind of tip of the spear of the resistance mm. <laughs> for many time against Trump. Uh, but that's something that's definitely true here as well. And I think the other thing is this tendency on the part of sort of elite corporate journalists to really gatekeep as well. They, yeah. This idea that he's not really a journalist, you know, therefore 
our principle shouldn't apply in this particular case. If you don't have a job at the Washington Post or the Guardian, then can you really be defended in the same way? I think there's there's a, a big dose of that as well. But Snobbery. Yeah. No, yeah. and it's and I think it's it's really telling that there are so many people who would see themselves as again sort of standard bearers of sort of liberal mm. British tradition who have been at best silent about this particular case. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's even interesting, you know, talking about how he's viewed through the kind of partisan lens to see how Trump has reacted to him. Mm. Because in 2010, um, when, you know, the first major WikiLeaks stories came out, Trump said that Assange should get the death penalty. By 2016, in his during his election campaign, he's saying, I love WikiLeaks because they exposed all that stuff about Hillary Clinton. And then a bit into his administration, he is... The one, you know, ultimately he's in charge of the administration that uh, goes after Assange uh, in 2019. Um, they even actually have very high level discussions about kidnapping him from the Ecuadorian embassy, having him assassinated. And then slightly further on, Trump considers pardoning him. <laughs> so, you know, he's again, he's a polarizing figure, but I guess that's just a reminder of why it's so important when it comes to these questions of free speech. You know, it's got to be about the principle. It can't be, you know, do you like Julian Assange? Do you like, you know, do you agree with the the stories that he's published, the targets that he's uh, taken on? It has to be, well, he was essentially publishing something. That is all he has done. That's all he's guilty of. Um, and he should be defended. He should not be in this position. And, and I mean, possi possibly if he were a US citizen, would be covered by the First Amendment, yeah. maybe, and, and, and may not be in the position that he finds himself in, in Britain. But no, I, I completely agree. Um, you know, we can't we can't on the one hand um, trumpet ourselves in the West as being much better than that lot over the other side mm -hmm. of the planet. You know, the, the Chinas and places like that, because you know, we don't chow political journalists and we mm -hmm. don't put them down in dungeons and we allow dissent and we allow freedom of expression and we allow scrutiny of, of government decisions. I mean, this this was information that related to you know, very controversial actions actually by the US government. If you look at some of the controversial actions around Afghanistan and Iraq over the years, um, and, you know, if you look at things like rendition uh, and torture and so on, and what happened at Abu Ghraib and, and what's gone on at, at Guantanamo over the years, thank God there are people out there who are willing to go sniffing around some of that stuff. Yeah. And, and I actually think it makes us a better society makes us better countries in the West because of it, because it does keep government on their toes. It does make them realise there are conventions that they have to abide by, that they can't engage in some of the stuff that other countries might engage in, um, in terms of human rights abuses and stuff. So, so all power to him. And as I say, I think it would be an appalling day if he, if he loses and is extradited.